Okay, so that was the perfect introduction for our next speaker. Um, we're going to talk about change, and now I'm going to invite Matt Rockle, who's uh, one of our assemblers, to come up to the stage and tell us about changes in his life as he is doing his best. Come on up, Matt. Thank you. Um, this week is something of an anniversary for me. Nine years ago, almost to the day, on May 4th, 2007, I packed all of my worldly possessions into a 2002 Volkswagen Jetta and drove across the country. Um, my name is Matt. Some of you may have figured that out by now. <laughs> and I'm doing my best by being here at Sunday Assembly with all of you wonderful people. Um, while it was definitely the hunger for connection that brought me here the first time in April of last year, it didn't do so without great protest from myself because I tend to find the most convoluted path towards a simple goal, as you're all about to witness firsthand. <laughs> no man is an island. I think even the first time I heard that, I thought that's really stupid. <laughs> of course, a man is an island. That's how we determine one from the other. It's like the very individualities that we hold dear and make us who we are that, by definition, set us apart into different entities. Every man is an island, but most find themselves in some kind of archipelago. For me, community never really felt like a constant throughout my life. I mean, we all lose people and communities. I'm sure we all have stories. If you're like me and you were raised in a religious community, you may have seen an entire massive community go extinct in a moment. For me, I've been rather lucky in that regard. But for young, stupid 24-year-old me, he noticed sort of a pattern emerging of moments in which his life suddenly became very small. Even before he came home from work one night, and his wife had packed her bags and was waiting by the door to leave for good. My world became very small. And more than that, my future was shattered. So I did what any good mid-20s millennial would do in such a situation. I moved back in with my parents. <laughs> Thank you for laughing at that. <laughs> they, uh, they nursed me back to health. And uh, while I tried to figure out what I was going to do with my life, I got a temp job that was supposed to last three to five weeks. Nine months later, I was at the same job. They had promoted me once, and they were offering to promote me again and give me a full-time permanent position at the company in wholesale lockbox and retail remittance processing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? So that forced me to take a good, hard, hard, long look at my life, and I did, and I turned in my two weeks' notice, and two weeks later, I was packing all of my worldly possessions into a 2002 Volkswagen Jetta. And my world got very small again because I was leaving behind family and friends to come out here, and I didn't even have a job out here. I had two friends, one of whom was gracious enough to rent me his spare bedroom for very cheap, while I looked for work in a place of my own, and the other one was willing to help me find some work. I've been out here nine years. Um, time flies, but you can do a lot in nine years, and I've done a lot. I've done a lot of positive things, too. Like, I've, I've uh, done a lot of adult things. I've fixed my credit score, which I only had to do because I destroyed my credit score. I paid off my student loans. I've uh, turned my job I want to do into a little career that's recently started flourishing, complete with union membership. I've lost 50 pounds recently, which I only had to do because I gained like, 60 pounds. But I never found a community of my own. Last April, it was my turn to have my bags packed and walk out the door on a relationship. And when I did that, my world got very small again because I wasn't investing in my own community. So when I left, all of the friends that I was very friendly with and were very friendly to me, but were only there because I was friends with my girlfriend, went back to what they really were. They were her community. So maybe it was, maybe it was, 
just coincidence that April of last year was the first time I came to a Sunday assembly. I'm sure you all remember me from that meeting. I was the one who snuck in right before it started and left right after it ended. <laughs> I talked to three people, which I thought was good for a first time. Um, I didn't come back in May, even though I had a great time. I did come back in June, and shortly thereafter, Terry Smith gave a very beautiful and heart-wrenching doing your best, wherein she mentioned that when she was just starting to come to assemblies, she forced herself to come by, by um, signing up for a volunteer obligation so that she couldn't back out, and I thought, that's genius, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> and so I did, a few months later. And as soon as I did, then I heard about how they needed help setting up and taking down lights. And I thought, I grew up in a theater, I can do that. I enjoy being backstage more than in the spotlight. And so I came back the next month and I helped set up lights. And I've come back every month and done that. So the inner introvert in me is absolutely terrified and excited to get to know more of you in the future. But my name is Matt and I'm doing my best by coming to Sunday Assembly. Thank you.